Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we have a historical rules event for you from the e EU. Yep, and our first map here is Otto and Sherrick. You're getting a nice overview of a map. A, a map not played that often, so it'll be fun to see that. And our second map for today is Roulette Lane. We see this often. It's very nice, very open. It should be fun to see, especially with the Lion Battle rules. Our team for today is on the Union. We have the 24th Georgia, 4th New Jersey, 2nd U.S., 7th South Carolina, the 5th U.S., the Chamberlain's Brigade, and the Davis Brigade, whereas on the Confederacy, we have the 10th Louisiana, 13th Georgia, I-Corps, 2nd Corps, and the Jenkins Brigade should be fun. So our teams for today is just myself and that one. Sevy is being uh, the announcers today. How's it going, Sevy? You know, I'm doing great. I mean, uh, you know, morning time, basically morning time still for me. Uh, EU event really early for me now. Yeah, same for me. So yeah. we'll see you uh, to do a little pregame of the maps because it takes a couple minutes for them to start. We'll see you then. All right, here we go for the first map. Here is Otto and Sherrick. So for the historical rules event, they have to wait till 40 minutes to start out and moving. So for these next couple minutes, we'll just be doing an overview of the map, talking what we think the strategies will be for this line battle. Uh, Savvy, mm -hmm. you have any thoughts? Yeah, so usually this is a very famous, not very famous, but you know what I mean, it, it's known in the community to be a union bias map. Um, and with this server count only being around 160, uh, that reputation may still be here. Again, remember, with larger player counts, generally gives the defenders a better chance. Um, what we see in a normal event is people just go to the stone wall. If the rebels are still down in the open, then it's an easy spot to shoot them from. And if not, then they just immediately charge. Uh, what we usually see, at least in the NA side, is just immediately charge, 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 because this is such a small map that these defenders can just levy the amount of tickets they have in melee. Melee, 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 over and over and over, until eventually they win. Um, we oftentimes see the Confederates pushed all the way back to that shack over there, but where you can see some late response. That's, that's where they spawn in later in the game. They, they, they generally fall back around that shack and that barn right there. Um, but with these historical more rules, um, I don't know if they're... I'm pretty sure they can melee whenever they want, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure just as long as they're in a line, I can pull up the rules right now. Uh, I'll get that in yeah. a minute. Yeah, there's a lot of extra rules in this to make it slightly more uh, feel like a line battle. So that's interesting. Um, and like you said, they can't move until, well, a minute 30 from now. Um, so it does, you know, it gives a little bit of an opportunity to see what we think they're going to do. So what I uh, what I expect more in a line battle um, is that I think they're going to split off into a bunch of different groups. Um, the unit that is like a group there, a group there, a group there. Um, and then from there, they're just going to start shooting at them. And, I... you know, that that'd be cool, but, you yeah. know. I think most of the Union is going to go on that stone wall because I remember when I first played, the strategy was Union would go on that stone wall and the Confederacy go by in the white gate and they just volley each other for 45 minutes until... <laughs> that was a horrible strategy, strategy though. <laughs> yeah, the, that strategy was thankfully changed. I got the rules pulled up now. Um, right. So I'm going to kind of go through some of these. So skirmishers, if there are skirmishers, must operate in small groups of at least three men but no more than 10 per side. Most that teams, won't be a difference in this map. Yeah, it's so small. probably won't even matter. Um, you got to be in one or two ranks in your line. I'm pretty sure there is no Steam chat either, and communication is all yes. within the game. Pretty sure about that one too, yeah. Yeah. And you know, if anybody wants some context for this map, um, this is right after the Ninth Corps pushed over the Burnside's Bridge, which you can see right there. Um, so, again, to their left over there is Hill's Counterattack. So you can see Hill's Counterattack over there. Um, right there, actually. Uh, so the North Corps that went to the left, they got countered by hills, and the ones who went to the right were seen over here. Um, they were able to push over there, and you can see probably the church, maybe. Uh, no, no, I can't really see the church from here. Maybe I'm looking the wrong direction, though. Um, whatever, it's going live in a couple seconds. But over there to the north is the rest of the battle. Yeah, so another couple of interesting things for this map is uh, for charges, you got to stay in a line as much as possible. But if not, eh, it's okay. Uh, if you have less than 10 men in your line, you have to fall in with another group and then along with that buildings are not allowed which will make Ooh, this interesting well if I, I think that's actually kind of good for the union because uh, that house tends to just be a ticket trap where uh, the defenders can drive down time um what we see here is that the defenders are actually going using this road to maneuver a little bit um yeah a lot of the union are going to that uh that stone wall like is a more usual strat um but i'm interested in just seeing how many men are going to the union left that is a lot of people um yeah yeah, I rarely, I mean, whenever I pub officer a match, or at least last couple times I've played this, I've only seen people go down to the right. I haven't seen much action on the left side of the map, because usually... Which is kind of earned it, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Are you talking about the left or the right? I'm talking about the union left. The union left kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's just, 
open all the way there. Confederates can see you from their house. Uh, whereas the right Union. side, you kind of got to defilade and whatnot. Yeah. Union using that solo, getting a couple kills, a couple information kills. Um, it's not gonna. Again, this is still a point match, so that doesn't really help them that much. Um, even though this is a line battle, or at least a historical rules event, even though the rules aren't historical, whatever. Um, even though this is more line battley, uh, we should still see more charging, in my opinion. Um, so unless there's a rule specifically against charging this early in the game, I don't think they should be hesitant. We can see a group over there moved up in the corn. Let's go see who they are. Let's go see what they're thinking about. Um, this group over here that went to the corn. It seems to be the PL, and yeah, this is the PL who went over here, and we can see some skirmishes up there, and they can have a perfect flanking shot on this, uh, these guys down here in this road. They're facing off against the, takes a second to maneuver, they're facing off against the 10th Alabama. Um, that's an interesting group right there, and also the second corps EU group, I think they're talking French over there. So the second corps EU group and the 10th Alabama over there. They are facing off. Oh, wait, is that another group that is missed? No, that's not. Okay, facing off against the PL on the top of the hill. And over here on the left, I'm getting some frames on this map. Over here yeah. on the left, we can see Jenkins Brigade facing off alongside the. Take a second to move. I think that's the 13th Georgia, if I saw it. Yeah, okay. And the skirmish group being the 1st Corps Walkers Division. Peoples. I'm kind of surprised they're spread out a little bit. It kind of makes sense so the Union doesn't like concentrate on one location, but then again, if they're spread out, they could if they get wiped on a volley, that could uh, be skirmishing deaths. I just heard somebody say quick step instead of quick time, and I hate you. Um, <laughs> DB alongside the IVB, and there was another group going up and over and charging the 24 Georgia. This is what we need to see. It is so early in the game, so as long as they can force these melees, force these tickets to go down ASAP, they should be good. Um, however, who knows, maybe if they, a little bit too hesitant, maybe if they stop their charges to volley, um, we might see some bad things. You can see that, that front group not losing a single man to these enemy shots. Yeah, because they, they got their defilated uh, position there, too. Now they're taking mm -hmm. a volley, take their first casualty there. Mm, I don't like this that much. I, I would, I think it'd be much better if they moved up near these little sheds over here. That'd be much better. You can see now they're just, they're just receiving fire from that flank. Um, one of these confederate groups I know is bucking ball. I know the other is stuck without it. Uh, I know, I'm, let me sec. Uh, these, yes, the Palmetto Sharpshooters, a couple of them get missed, uh, uh, Whitworth rifles, and phenomenal guns in real life, in game, they're poop, they're dog shit, so, you know, just, uh, don't use that, um, we can see here that the DB, the bunch of other groups, and alongside a small group for the PL, I thought they were on the left, I guess not, and the IVB and the 24th now facing off, shooting up this hill, the guys who are over here facing off, um, the, the Jenkins Brigade is still holding these sheds, which is a very good position that allows them to retreat behind some saw cover to reload, and they also have perfect shots over the Union. Um, that is just great flank and fire. The Union, if they just stay there, they're going to lose. They need to charge or they need to fall back. Yeah, I mean, we saw the, the Rebel groups, they were spread out, so they could easily defeat in detail, possibly charge up the right side here mm -hmm. and take them out. I think that might be out of line for them, out of bounds. Uh, I, don't, no, I, I don't think that right is. Going up the hill, yeah, it is, but where those rocks are, I'm pretty sure those are fine. It's just well, going up we'll the see. hill a little more. Yeah. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Uh, I know for certain that you can reach them without getting, without dying, though, because I've seen melee happen there before. Yeah. Um, so if, if it is out of line, it's less than 20 seconds away. We can see now that the 13th Georgia uh, fell back a little bit uh, over here, and the Jenkins Brigade is using... Ooh, that's interesting. Nice little maneuver there. These bushes make it very hard for the Union to see them. Again, it doesn't add any defensive... You know, they don't actually, like, stop bullets or anything. Um, but we can see from this position that if there's a Rebel in there, would you really even see him? I... It'd be hard, especially when you're looking over here on the right. Um, Union group sending volleys up, a lot of them missing. Um, and now we can just see that this group over here, this is the 13th, now flanking up in the over. Again, they're now in the shade, which is still hard to see. A lot of them shooting, aiming with their buck and ball. Fire. They took way. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of hoping their volley would be a little bit faster there. So you don't need eight <laughs> seconds to aim, sir. Um, no how's the how's the left side looking? Has anything happened I, over there? I don't think anything's moved over there. Uh, the PL, ooh, did the PL advance? Or did it, yeah, the, oh, the 5th? Fifth, fifth got over here, and now the PL advanced into a little skirmish line. That's about it. Um, they're still facing off against the 10th Alabama, it should be. The 10th Alabama is, yes, no, the Jeffersons, that's the, that's the skirmishers, and the 10th Alabama's just sitting here looking pretty, which they are looking pretty pretty. Uh, and also the, yeah, the 2nd Corps EU part in a 2 rank column, or a, a, a 2 rank line. Which, uh, you don't, whatever, whatever, I'm not, I'm, fuck it, you don't need to be two ranks if you're a six person line, it wasn't anything near historical, whatever, um, ah, 
24th, they're doing a little bit more advancing here. No, this, these are the Union. The Union did a little more advancing, that is. Um, and they did a little rising volley up there. Uh, looks like the Confederates are still holding the same positions, though, so they didn't have any large effect. Uh, over a lot of blood over here, a lot of blood. Still 33 minutes. The Union, they are keeping up a good constant amount of pressure. Not as much melee as I would love to see. Um, but if they continue this kind of pressure a little bit more, uh, we might see a really early engaged taking losses and breaking. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully Union won't stay there because you can kind of see if you look back down on the right, there is a bunch of dead Union. I don't know how many dead Rebels uh, yeah. or how many people they're killing, but you can definitely see there's Union blood there. They've probably taken a decent amount of casualties from there. Oh, yeah, I don't know for certain. And now, um, especially because they've been uh, sitting there for a while, CSA will, might get ready for them to charge. They could be a lot more prepared now than they were, what, mm -hmm. 10 or so minutes ago. All right, not 10 minutes. <laughs> we haven't even yeah. been 10 minutes, but when they pu originally pushed forward. But we can see now that the Union charging really spread out there. Like, I'm sorry, this group in front, whoever this is, really brave, but I think they're going to die first. Um, this is the DB led by Mr. Golly. Uh, and they're facing off against the Jenkins Brigade. Let's see how, how well the Jenkins Brigade does against holding the entire Union right side push. Fairly well. Fairly well. Um, I think they're about to get wiped out of the JB, that is. And the rest of the Confederacy are just, like, gonna let them die out of line. That is, that is a waste. I think they should have joined the melee up there. Um, yeah, they're just sitting they're there just watching. Holding... <laughs> yeah, like, 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 that guy's in right shoulder shift. No, he's in shoulder arms. They're in shoulder arms. Um, that's, I'm sorry, that, that's really fucking stupid. Um... Historical rules doesn't mean you have to sit there in, 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 sho in fucking shoulder arms while your friendlies are dying. Uh, we can see now that these uh, the rest of the Union, though, the ones who survived, they're very small numbers. If they confess to the counter-charge, they kill them all. But I, I don't even think they want to do a counter-charge. I think they just want to sit there. Yeah, no, I don't know if it'd be necessarily... I don't know, you probably you might... Uh, I don't know if charging them out would be tickets-wise, would be wise in terms of tickets. Yeah, but then again, if, if you stay here, they control the point now. Like, like the, 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 the Confederates just gave up control of the point. Um, I, I think in this situation, it's definitely worth it to counter charge. Uh, they might not... <laughs> the, the unit all fell back to their death flight. Oh, why did they fall? You know, they... Yeah, we saw them taking losses there. It, I think it would make more sense to go up to the shed. Maybe they fell back because they could get attacked from all sides at that shed. From, but possibly. <sighs> I but guess, I guess. But still, I, I, don't, I don't love that move. And now we can see the Confederate reinforcements are here with reloads ready. And uh, let's let's just... They're going to yeah, get point blank I, shots on those Union guys who just pushed up to that fence now. Yep. Now if they start shooting a little more left, they'll get a lot of kills. Oh, they all shot right. They missed that entire Union group right there. Um, they were all shooting at a, at a downed flag instead of at the main line. Oh, that, that's just what you see in the Flog of War. That they really, uh, from their perspective, they couldn't see the main Union group there. All they saw was the flag bear. That's interesting. Um, let's see. Anything change on the left? Nope. Oh. Is this, our, is this artillery? Yeah, it's just artillery. Never mind. A couple of infantrymen up here with the artillery. This is the third Alabama now with Williamson aiming down. I remember he had a Lamont. What do I happen to the, uh, was it 5th or 2nd U.S. that was there? They probably it was the 5th U.S. and the PL. Yeah, yeah, it's 2nd U.S. Cavalry. Um, okay, I, I got to say, USC. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to finish that. Um, not an abbreviation for cavalry. <laughs> um, we can see now on the left, or back over here on the right, the Confederate charging in. Oh, the 6th Alabama who were on the uh, their right side, the Union left, and now moved over here to this flank to help out their brothers in arms. Um, however, I don't really think that this melee here, a lot of buck and ball, very little hitting, because again, they're just shooting, I don't know, they're not very shooting very well. Um, yeah, no. Now they're up and over, and they're saying information though, at least. The Confederates are doing a good job doing saying information while melee. Yeah, for Those sure. Those guys are going out of line, actually. It looks Charging like... into the Ivy Beast flank. <laughs> it looks like Union's going to get uh, pushed back here. Uh, yeah, certainly. Dang. Seamus? Seamus? Nah. Whoa, whoa. Okay, now we can see there. He might be able to kill that last Confederate. He did kill one. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he did. did he down. did. He did. No, no, Seamus is alive. Oh, he's still alive. I thought, oh my goodness, what a couple kills there. <laughs> but now, ooh, this is great. The re response becoming very aggressive. This is what they need right here. The 4th New Jersey pushing up, facing off against these Union guys, ignoring their left. Their left is open. I just, I just heard the officer say he's down with voice chat, but we can see here that a couple of these Confederates are still alive to their left. Yeah, so we can hear him talking in game. I really don't understand him. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... Uh, it's, like, it's like the Austro-Hungarian army here. Yeah, it looks like that Union push we just saw, that tiny push, is falling... Maybe yeah, staying I there? I can't up. tell. Yeah, they just fought. Right back. back. Yeah. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of death up here. You know, if the Union could just keep up Carnage, they have a lot more tickets on this map. Like, a lot. 
like historically speaking, Burnside's core was large. So, you know, if he can just, like, if, if these Union guys keep up this carnage, they'll have a good chance. However, uh, on this left side, we see a shootout. The fifth and the, this is just the fifth, and the second, or, yeah, the second U.S. Cavalry, and I think, where'd the PL go? Um, whatever, you, they're still over here somewhere on this flank. Is this them? Yeah, wow, they've lost a lot of men. Um, just doing long-range shootouts, that is, I don't think, to their advantage. If anything, yeah. to the Confederates' advantage. Yeah, no, they're not getting effective shots. They can't charge on that side either because it's just a big open field to get slaughtered, especially because mm -hmm. Rebel Artie is up on a nice position mm -hmm. up on the left. Looks like more Rebel reinforcements now coming in, probably returning to that re original shed position that we yes, were yes. seeing. Yes, just because you can see the enemy does not mean your, your shot's going to land. And uh, that, that's what we see a lot in that left flank is that just the, both sides have been shooting back and forth and that a shootout at further than like 50 yards is, again, the, this isn't that far away. They're not, a, they're not even 100 yards away. I'm sorry. Um, but ooh, Union didn't engage first. Uh, you know, that, 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 that's bad for the Union, but it's not the worst. If the Confederacy engage in the next minute or so, the Union will have a great chance still. Um, in the next three minutes or so, and then still be around even. But if anything longer than that, and the Union doesn't drive down the Confederacy and engage, uh, that's horrible for the Union. Um, yeah, we were kind of seeing this last night too on Anderson's counterattack, how the uh, Confederacy really split up their forces attacking, and it really, that nice body, it really um, slowed down their chances of winning, which we're kind of seeing here. The Union is very, very spread out on this Perfect map. Perfect shot. And they, uh, they can't really do effective charges because they'll just get pushed back really quickly. Mm-hmm. Remember back in the day when, uh, you know, I guess it's 180 now, but back in the day when 150 player was the max, you would see a full 75 person charge down this hill and up the hill. And you know what the Confederates over there who would be defending that area, they wouldn't be able to come over here in time to save their guys on the, uh, you know, the other flank. Um, but what we see now is that the Union are spreading themselves out. And unless they're able to drive down the Confederates to engage very quickly, uh, they will be at a severe disadvantage. The Confederates, now, again, the, the, the Confederates have good hard cover everywhere. Everywhere they are, except on that on that little fencer there, uh, every other group has great cover where they can reload. And, oh, Confederates are engaged. Okay, the Union have a chance here, I think. Um, but still, the Confederates have a much better position. So unless the Union use their bayonets to charge them out, it is 94-93. It's a perfectly even game. Um, so unless the con Union uses their bayonets, they're going to not. They're not going to be able to win. Let's see. Let's see how many men each Cooper's artillery. Confederates have six in artillery, and Union have four. That's that's good. I mean, that's what I. Well, that's what I would hope for, was, you know, around right. five-person artillery. I was going to make a comment. Kind of smart that the Rebels fell back from those rocks there because they probably saw that, oh, we're a little divided. We could just fall back from these rocks a little bit and then be more clumped up in mm -hmm. case they charge. But it looks like they're moving. Nope, they're going back. They were just doing a volley. Yeah, it was yeah I don't think like, the Rebels. Oh, that rising volley was not helpful. Look at that. Even okay. one dead man makes that, that whole rising volley not worth it. Um, ooh, let's see over here. I think if I remember correctly by the flag, this is the third Alabama. No, it's the tenth Alabama. Sheesh. Um, tenth Alabama now pushing back up here, facing off against the PL. Are they going to up and over? No, they're going to hold up here on this fence. The Union are early capping point. I don't know if they actually plan on fully capturing it or not. Looks like not. Looks like they are just have two guys. Mr. Fish over here. Pff, fuck, those guys are bad shots. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, they finally uh, got him. They got him. It looked uh, like his head Mr. bunked the, the fence and he just collapsed. <laughs> I saw it too. You know what? Yeah, the Rebels didn't hit him. He just got a concussion. <laughs> um, the Union guys are probably going to be very afraid of capturing early. Personally, in this situation, if they were to capture the point, it wouldn't hurt the Union that much. It would just force the Confederates to come off their hill and uh, charge them. Um, so, you yeah. know, I can understand why they wouldn't want to. They don't want to have a counterattack and all that stuff. But I still think that early capping would be a good thing in this situation. Yeah, look how many casualties Union's taken there. They could cap yeah. the point, draw the Confederates out, and in the middle of the open and just possibly shoot them down from the stone wall. I don't know how good mm -hmm. of a vantage point because I haven't experienced that before. But they could— Oh, what do, what do you mean? That's a, it's pretty good. I mean, the, the Union— Okay, it would be horrible for the Union to have to fall back that stone wall because um, then you have to actually charge down. Oh, my gosh! The sixth pushing forward to stop— Stop the cap. Hashtag stop the cap. Uh, now they're in a little skirmish sign. I think by the rules of the game, they should have to fall back by now. No, they, if they have more than three guys, they can. Okay, okay. Well, you know what? They're in skirmish. If, if, they're, if they're a skirmishing group, if you want to call it that. I guess I guess that's what they are now. Uh, the Union falling back? Oh, they, that's... that's. Okay, maybe they're just falling back to, this, uh, to the shade to get reloads. He said keep moving. Oh, that's... I don't like that. If falling back is not what I think would be good here. They should probably cap if they are going to fall back. <laughs> I agree completely. Yeah, cap, stop the timer, you know. 
Um, yeah, if, and then if, force if, them to come if, out and shoot. Yep. If all you do is cap, and then both sides are taking losses, what you did was you pause the timer and bought both sides are taking losses. What I used to say was, if as the attacker, you can play at the beginning of the ground. If you can start the game at breaking, breaking, you almost would always choose to do that. Um, so early capping is almost always better. PL and the fifth now facing off against the entire 10th Alabama. Couple, I, I only saw three men. Oh, that's a lot more men in those later shots, <laughs> losing Jeez. down, falling to that. The Confederates doing a great job staying in formation up here. And you know, now they're doing a little retreat. That is, that was a great move by the 10th Alabama with some remnants of other groups. That was great. Nice job. Um, over here on the top left, I think everybody's out the corn now. Yeah, everyone's out the corn. Um, which, by the way, again, this uh, Burnside's core historically moved right through that area to our left. Where, where, uh, yeah, I'm disoriented. Moved right over there. And uh, in the Conquest game mode, there was a couple points. I don't know if it's still in, in this version of the Conquest game mode. I, I haven't actually had the time to look at it yet. Um, but there was one where there was like four points in this forest right here. Now it's pretty interesting. Yeah, for the uh, the next set of Conquest, they have a bunch of drill camp maps or pick a patrol maps, if you want to call them that. But interesting. It's it's nice to see maps that are not the maps that we've already seen a lot. Like the Conquest maps as of last week were like maps we've seen, like Hooker's Push, Miller's Cornfield. Mm -hmm. Like we've seen these maps before. Whereas these uh, newer maps this week uh, are based on the drill camp, and you usually don't fight in those areas. So I, I appreciate yeah. that a lot. Yeah, I uh, yeah, whatever. I I I still wanted a historical mode, like a uh, hello loose kind of game mode instead of a, you know, what we have now. Um, but whatever though, I um, that would be sad. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna get it though. They they said they were never gonna do that. Aww. I don't know why. We're just gonna make they their own War Rights game. What they said was that skirmish mode will be the most historical mode that War Rights will ever have. So Aww. <laughs> ah, yeah. Maybe maybe because right. I I know um. <laughs> At least in terms of making a video game, you don't want to overscope. Maybe, hopefully, they're just keeping it within scope right now, and then maybe if they get their stuff done, because this is an ambitious project already, and it probably takes them a while to get stuff done because they're using CryEngine. I don't know what the heck that is. Um, but yeah, maybe, ah, I just think they're trying not to overscope as of right now. I don't know. I, I kind of disagree. I mean, they're trying to have four new player servers. That's that's overscoping in my book you know i guess i guess, think, uh, I guess I it's saw a, an admin just to get out the house i think it's just a preference of what you like and what you don't like the sir I'm, I'm sorry but the, there's never going to be a point where there's two war right servers of 400 people so I, I i just think it's a falsehood to try to make games that would be fun at 400 players when you're never going to see that Maybe they'll stop after 400 <laughs> no 500 <laughs> servers and yeah. you're not well, charging it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a little advance over here on the right. The 24 facing off against the third. Uh, Williamson going down with his Lamat no longer available. Schumacher. Let's see. I want to see what kind of gun Schumacher has. Schumacher has a Remington. I'm so sorry, but uh, you are not cool in my book. Get yourself a Lamat. I don't know why he picked a Lamat. Like, he picked a Remington? Why? Like, you can just arrow over and pick a Lamat instead. Whatever. So it looks like Union just ran up, volleyed, or shot in the volley. And lost half their men and fell back. Did they, how much damage did they deal with the Confederacy? Uh, if any if any losses there, I saw the loss of Williamson, and that was about it, and it was information. That's all I saw. Uh, artillery hitting above him. Uh, if nothing else, I saw at least one corpse there. Um, beside that, if nothing else, at least suppressing him. Perfect shot over their head. Um, yeah. Maybe if that would have gone a... right before the charge, that might have been more of a effective charge. Mm -hmm, yes, I, I can agree there. Um, 20 minutes are about to come, and without the Confederates sitting, taking losses yet, um, which usually a pre-20 minute taking losses is phenomenal for the attacker. Doesn't mean though necessarily that it uh, it's unwinnable. We saw last night how the uh, the NA event, um, how the attackers were able to win Anderson's counterattack with a 13 minute taking losses, um, but that's just you know because they charge everybody at the same time. Um, yeah. So from this, yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. I was just going to yeah, agree for, with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from this view, I was about to say that we see the Union not being aggressive at this exact moment. Uh, losing a couple men in the, down in the bottom of that valley. Um, and the Confederates holding great positions on these heights. Uh, good positions of cover, good positions of reloading. I think that's the peel over there. Now just reformed a little skirmish line. Looks really cool from afar. Uh, probably killing nobody, though. No offense. Hey, hate to break it to you, but it's not helping your team to shoot at the artillery. Did they charge the... the point. Couldn't they charge the rebel artillery? Oh, did they kill them already? No, the, the, there's not that many corpses. They just fell back, it looks like. Yeah, they lost a few men. These are mostly uh, the riflemen, and then they fell back, it looks like. 
Ah, I see. So it looks like the riflemen who are with them all died. Let's see if they switched off artillery. They have, they have not. So they still have five artillery just waiting for their cannons to come back. That's five rifles that are able to shoot. That is ten shots per minute at the least. So, you know, shots per minute, guys. Come on. It's not worth having five guys in artillery who don't have an artillery gun, you know? So, yeah. You can see over here, Mr. Schumacher is able to look down on these Union guys from this position. And it might not look that good from afar, but this position over here with the shed is phenomenal. Um, you're shooting Buckmall down there, and while they're all kneeling, you'll kill the guys who are standing, and the ones who are kneeling, I mean, they're all going to be super fucking surprised. We can hear all those bucking ball shots. If you if you ever want a good uh, bucking ball noise, just listen to that. That right there was, you could just tell by the sound of it that it's bucking ball. In this game, bucking ball makes a ba-dung sound instead of a bang, so. Yeah. I can hear them yelling, get down. The rest of these guys are now advancing to the right. This is the DB, the DB, Mr. Goalie, and the 4th NJ are now advancing over here to the right of the uh, 24th. And the Confederates, they're not doing much. I mean, they don't really have to do much. They're doing the Rising Volleys. They've been doing the same little things they've been doing this whole game. Is it really the Rising Volleys falling back to reload over and over and over? 18 minutes, I'm almost come, and the Union <laughs> taking losses first. Wow. That, you know, the, okay. This Confederate advance is stupid. I'm so sorry, third. That was dumb. That was really dumb of you. IVB and the PL are about to kill the rest of these out of line people. Out of line and out of the line. Oh, you got it. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but we just saw off. there those two Confederate out of lines or three just caused the uh, Confederates uh, the equivalent of losing 10 men to being shot at from afar. Um, that advance was not worth a third. I don't care. I don't care. It brought the Union down to taking losses. Uh, that was bad. The th I think that was the third and the tenth little joint charge. Yeah, no, um, you, they would have shot him down and gotten taking losses anyway. Um,. Yeah, I honestly now the the like in terms of charging, I don't know where a good position would be for the Union to charge. I know exactly where a good position would be if they got their entire force right here on this fence line, and then just charged up through those things. Um, they can't go into that house over there, but what they can do is go down on this staircase and on this little porch right there. That would be a perfect area for them. But instead, we can see that they just want to charge and die, charge and die. Um, again, why why go over the right? I don't understand that. Why would you go you, up you, to the right instead of just going right here into the flank? I see that group over there. Far right. Confederates had taken losses around a minute behind the Union. A minute and ten or so. Um, you know what? The Union, I know that isn't uh, optimal, and I'll just bitch at them. But if they're able to come up with this uh, with this force over and over and over, um, they're going to be able to hit the Confederates on a breaking in the last stand. And even if they hit final push before the Confederates hit last stand, this is a very small map. And you'll be able to get trickling on the point, and you'll be able to get that overtime, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That right Union prong holding on those rocks now pushing in. They're very yeah, yeah, spread I, out it's, though. This is a, this is dumb. Why would you do that? They're whole. Sure, you, you you killed a couple guys, but you killed what, like three people. Why would you do this? Why are you doing this? Yeah, no, you're in the middle. Why open. are you kneeling? No, go back what to the rocks or go back to the defilade. You got no cover. Literally, being go shot back. Yeah, go back sides. five yards, and then you won't. They won't even be able to see you while standing. I don't understand what's oh, happening here. That's Confederates are doing a small advance over here. If they can charge them out, and they would probably still go come out and take a positive. But I don't think that's yeah. the best move for the Confederates. Union still crouching. Those guys are still crouching there. Now they realize get up and turn around to help the rest of their guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Confederates were never going to win that. The Confederate group that charged in was all alone and outnumbered. Wait, what the fuck is the Union retreating? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The Confederates got a bunch of out of line kills up here because the Union retreated. What's that? Why the Union retreat? They could have won that. Okay, Confederates come out the victors of that charge, Union pulling back, and the Union definitely lost more out of line than the Confederates there. But I still, I think that the Confederates thing right now, they just hit a 16-minute taking losses. Um, that is still early. They have to hold 16 minutes without hitting breaking for, you know, they, they can hit breaking. You know what I think, I'm trying to say. I think that flag was getting out of there just to protect the flag, and then yeah, maybe one or two people followed, yeah, to protect okay. it. But, no, if they stayed back, they would have... Maybe won that, yeah, because there was only like three or four rebels left after that charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if, if they stayed with their friends, um, it would have been a lot better. I, I, what I like to say is that uh, if a melee is two on one, it's you don't see it that the the, the one wins a third of the time, the two win like a lot more than two thirds of the time, right? Um, it's just stabs per minute in melee. And I know I'm saying shots per minute, stabs per minute, all this stuff per minute. But that's, that really is what it comes down to. Um, shots per minute and stabs per minute. Uh, in a melee, you want people stabbing. That's all you want is that people should be clicking their left-click button and not hitting friendlies. If they're doing those two things, you're and you have more stabs per minute than the enemy, you're going to win. Uh, it's just, it's basic math. So, oh, oh, they did a little rising volley. What group they shoot at? They shut down that flank. Kinda... Well, you know what? I, I was about to say the PL was probably going to get amazing flanking shots, but they really didn't. 
I... Yeah, no, there, what, are you, what are you doing? Away. <laughs> what are you doing, guys? What are you, what are you doing? Whatever. Uh, and this giant skirmish line up here, uh, still shooting at nothing, not being able to hop out in many melees. Again, I am very against this. I don't think this is, this is a phenomenal for the defenders. We can see that five confederates over there are keeping the entire PL pinned, and the IVB to add that. So two entire groups are pinned down, trying to face off against that small group right there. They're not able to help out in melees, they're not able to help out in charges. They're not able to force, you know, numbers on anywhere. So what we see here is that a slightly outnumbered Union right flank is having to charge up, 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 over and over on these confederates. Um, I'm almost certain that the Union are outnumbered over here on the right flank. Yeah, uh, well, so, what makes this yeah. so much harder for them, too, is they don't have a Steam chat. They can only communicate in-game. And so mm -hmm. if they want to do a coordinated charge down the center, possibly, like that left group pushes forward and then this right group pushes towards the middle, they can't They can't organize that. They just got to look and be like, oh, one group's charging. I guess I should charge, too. And that's why we see a lot of times, like, one group's charging in, like, right now, for example. These guys are going to get slaughtered oh, by the whole CSA team. Because what was that? What was, no it? What was their goal there? Ninth Rhode Island and some other groups, I couldn't even see the rest of their names before they fucking died. He doesn't even know how to jump this fence over here. Uh, I'm sorry, he, it, he tried to... That's not how you jump the fence right there. <laughs> ah! Um, whatever. I'm sorry, I just... Yeah, no, it's, it's, this, is, this, is, this is frustrating to watch. Now we get more Union groups coming in a little late. Maybe they're Why going they for going the cap right now? You don't need to cap by the tree. You can be like right there and be capping. If I, were the, if I were the union, I'd put my guys up on the fence right there, and then have like three guys right there on the road just kneeling. That'd be the best. But this is just like, hey, a confederate, could you please kill us all, please, with your welcome ball? Yeah, they have guys kneeling. They're holding they off right dying. now. They're not dying yet. Uh, there goes yeah, the flag. Yeah, because the confederates are reloading, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> look at them, just like uh, get evaporated before our eyes. Honestly, um, yeah, I think the fact that it's even numbers, union spread out, and communication can't happen over like a steam chat i think it's making really hard for the union to do anything if union yep. want to make communication more effective they gotta stick together as a whole big group mm -hmm. of course yeah, that they... might that might cause the confederates to all concentrate on you and you might take a little more losses but at least communication will be much better and you could possibly charge things better but we see here is that again this is a they have to send runners back and forth to talk um so the confederates they're all all their groups are in a very small range you know like all the groups are near this house within running distance of it uh, except for those skirmishes up there, which, but those skirmishes really don't need an order, right? They just need to keep the fucking three groups pinned, I guess. Um, so, you know, like, like their standing order could just be, hey, if one of us gets charged, the rest of us go near them, right? And that could just be, like, a very easy way of coordinating. It's just, like, if one of us gets charged, everybody else be ready to help them. Um, these union guys, they have to get together and say, like, all right, everybody, make sure to press T constantly. Uh, I'm going to run to all the other groups at, uh, at 10 real in charge. But then if you can run to one group, okay, one group to, you know, three groups can say, okay, but then the fourth group is like, well, actually, we'd rather wait till 1030. And then you got to go back and talk to every yeah. other group, right? Yeah, I so, think yeah. last week um, I was hearing about this from the IVB officers is that, a uh, messenger came up to him and said, hey, Rebels on point, fire on point. And this was on Hooker's push. That's a dumb reason to have a fucking messenger. So the messenger told the RD, hey, they're on point. So Union already fires. But by the time that messenger got there, Union was trying to take the point, And they were on point. And they friendly <laughs> fired. Their, they friendly hit their friendlies. Union go down to breaking now. But it's just, it's yeah. kind of funny. And I, I how how often did that happen in... Um, war uh the civil war do you know savvy uh to be honest i don't think uh friendly artillery hitting uh, advancing infantry was as big of an issue um because the well it was still obviously an issue i know it definitely happened there are definitely counts of blue on blue um on both or especially in riflemen um but the thing about it is that it's really hard to verify that you know the artillery that hit you was from the enemy or from the friendly um meanwhile we have a lot more accounts for example i think at the battle of maybe p ridge um, there was a Iowa militia regiment that had gray uniforms. Um, and the, one of the union commanders, I think it was a division commander, maybe it was Siegel, I can't remember uh, the exact details, but he thought when he saw a bunch of advancing rebels, he thought that they were friendlies. So he saw these advancing gray coats that looked like that, and he thought, oh, it's that one Iowa group with the weird uniforms, obviously. And he didn't shoot them without noticing that it was actually the rebels. So, oh jeez, the eye. Oh, that sucks. You can't hit T in the Civil War. Why are the mm -hmm. Why are the Confederates charging up here? 
I guess they just want to hit breaking. I don't know. That was really retarded. I'm so sorry, but uh, I didn't see any names there. I wasn't going to call them out in the middle of my story. Um, but at least this little palm guy, I don't care how many kills you get, you two. You're not going to help. Like, you're not helping your team over here, Mei That is, It does not matter. You can kill a fucking billion Yankees. It would not matter. You're not helping your team. Yeah, no, because you know? you'll just go down to breaking sooner, and then the Union can just collapse on point. Oh, my God. What's happening over here? Yeah, really, these guys, their goal should be not to hit breaking until, like, there's five minutes left in the game, right? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. <sighs> I mean, maybe, yeah, I I don't know. I can understand the guys that we were just looking at on your left, why they went oh, up. Because yeah, they've, been okay. they've been doing that the whole game, right? And and, and their flank is secured by these guys. Their flank is secured, right? Yeah, but the guys we were just first looking at, the guys here, that made no sense. Yeah, really. Like, oh, my God, that was... Uh, you know, it really it really hurts to see the team that's winning do something dumb like that because it's like, well, how much are they winning due to their own volition or due to the, the enemy's failures? But you can see over here that the respawns getting the reloads and bayonets on this stone wall, um, a pretty good place to regroup before you advance. And now we can see they're bringing it to advance, starting with the 4th New Jersey, and it looks like the CB, but 24th, a bunch of other groups, the 9th, the DB, the 24th, Mr. Richard, or I'm sorry, Rich Card. I guess he's uh, he's his own group right there. Um, they're all advancing now on the right. They have eight minutes left to bring down the Confederates to taking to breaking and capture the point. They should. Um, Confederacy should theoretically go down to breaking within a minute or two, based off what we've seen. If I were the Confederates, if I were the Confederates, I follow up behind the barn. Everybody behind the barn. Um, I don't know if that's against the rules here, uh, but if you get everyone behind the barn, um, you there's no risk of hitting breaking. And if the Yankees were to capture point, then you'll get the Yankees down to last stand and win from that. Um, so you know, there's a lot of. Uh, God, the conversers keep it advancing. The conversers can do anything, I think. They can do, they have so many options to, to continue to drive down that timer. But instead, they're shooting to die. And what the fuck are they doing? I don't understand this. Why are they reloading here? Man, okay, uh, I'm, also, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to dox this group. Hey, Mr. Mr. Second Corps guys, you guys, what are you doing? You're not helping your team here. Yeah, Thanks no, for that's too skirmishing. There. That's too skirmishing, probably. A third, yeah. a third dotted line there. Yep. Now they're retreating. Nice job, guys. Little advance there. Killed one Yankee, maybe? Max? Ah, uh, hurts, hurts my brain. Hurts my brain. Because they've been doing so well this whole game. And if they throw it away just from going out of line over and fucking over, I'm going to be mad at these Rebels. They just... I'm so sorry. But, like, right now, they deserve this win. They've been playing better than the Yankees. So if they die, if they just lose it for no reason, it would, it would hurt me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Just don't drop the bag. <laughs> I think, yeah. Yeah. The Union should start early capping. They should have a couple guys over there by the tree, a couple guys on the road early capping. But instead, I don't know what they're doing here. Like, to... Do they want it to come down to a final push, last stand charge? Is that what they want? Because that's not what I would advise. Yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think what we're going to see here is a final push union taking losses or even breaking Confederates. And the union just aren't going to be able to capture their point, possibly. I can still see the union winning. Obviously, this is still a union bias map. Um, you know, we use the Confederates on those rocks with these guys over here, you know, dying out of line, too. Uh, like, if these unions just sit back and, like, oh, yeah, they'll just randomly hit breaking without us doing anything. Um, there's six minutes left in the game. That is enough time to get, like, you can get two shots off a minute. That is 12 shots. These guys, each of these people can get at most 12 shots. And what are they doing? They're, they're sitting. Um, you know, that, that's just, you don't have time. Six minutes is not time. This is nothing. You have no time now. You basically should just be telling like you have a final push, you know, at, at this point in the game. Like, you, and they're doing rising volleys. They're doing rising volleys. I mean, Five minutes I mean, game. but here's the thing, right? They only got that one group there. How effective are they going to be in a charge? You know, they the commute and you got a group just sitting back at the stone wall volleying. They're not together. They can't charge. They're just they they gotta just do rising volleys until they all mess up. You know, I don't blame I the guys down there for doing that. I, I guess I think I I, I kind of do. The guys up there should start the cap. They should they I think this entire group should start moving the point. Um, you don't have to be on this point marker to be on point. This point elongates almost. I'm pretty sure the cutoff is either this tree or this um or that break in the fence. One of those two is the cutoff. And on the opposite side, I'm pretty sure it's around this white fence, um, where the point extends really long along this road. So, you know, I'm sorry, guys. There is five minutes left in the game now. You have enough time to get off ten shots. Why would you be shooting? You're not gonna hit anything. <laughs> And even if you do hit anything, it's not going to help your team. You're going to be hitting people information. This is not the time to be volleying. The time to be volleying ended 40 minutes ago. I said 40 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. The time to be volleying ended before the game started because this map is the volley map. This <laughs> is the map where the true. attack should be. Yeah. Um, I meant to say 30, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> I don't like this. Like, the, the, these Union guys. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The Union guys can play however they want to play, and if they want to lose, they want to lose, right? Um, these, the, the CSA, I think, 
I should be focusing on more because they are the ones who actually have been playing maneuvering well. You see, with their little advance right there, this advance is better than all the other advances because they're losing two or three men out of line, or I'm sorry, in, in formation, and being able to uh, have a great effect on point. Union now advancing, they have a couple men on point. They are being countered though by these guys here. I hope that they stay there. They'd be really smart to stay where they are. Yes, are they yes, they're right staying where they are. They are on point, yes. The uh, point extends a little bit yeah, too that'd be good. They should probably get someone to their right, though, to sh uh, cover the guys who are shooting at them from their flank. I just saw one of the Rebel dudes go down by their shots. But I don't know how effective five guys are going to be shooting at that Rebel. Well, one. yeah, but I agree completely that once these reinforcements get over, they should have somebody to affect their flank. There's three minutes left the game. Confederates are not to taking losses. They're never going to hit final line. They're not... The Confederates are never going to hit last stand. The Confederates might as well play like they have infinite tickets now. They will never hit last stand now. Um, with three minutes left in the game, the Union, they still have men back there all the way, back at spawn. They have men behind the house. They have men reloading behind the house and going back behind the house for cover. Confederates not hitting breaking. Three minutes left in the game. That is the latest breaking I've seen in a long time. Um, this is just... I don't know what the attackers are even trying to do. Now, remember, it takes around two minutes, a little bit more, to capture a point. These Confederates could wait until there's a minute left of the game and then charge them out. And you know what? If they do that, I think they have a... They... they yeah, whatever. If they do that strategy, they can't lose. That is a unlosable strategy. Um, so I think they're going to try to shoot out for a few minutes, wait until it's around half Union cap. That's right with their... If they send messages around to say, like, at half Union cap, charge right now. That's all they need to be saying. That's the only, uh, the only call out they need to be saying. The Union need to having a little bit less coordination now, because their whole main go is just, get on point, everybody get on point, get on point, what are you doing, yep. like, get on point, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be yeah. trickling in, too. Because they're oh, spread out. Oh, no! Confederates are charging. I think the Confederates are charging way too early now. That is... Oh, no, no, no. The Confederates are de defeated in detail, I think. Uh, unless they do phenomenal in these shootouts, these Confederates, they're going to be left outnumbered on point. Um, yeah, half the, half the the CSE. Union reinforcements are just stopping. Oh no! Yeah, no, never mind. Yeah, no, these Confederates actually win this melee. The, the rest, of, yes, the rest of their teammates are coming in from every single flank. On number, these Union's completely on point. Great job by the Confederates there. Um, let's see how well that this they're able to do from this uh, closer view than the bird's eye view. Um, from down here, you can be very obvious now that although the Confederates are losing a couple men here and there, the Confederates are in control completely of the road. Which, although the point goes off a little bit to the left and right of the road, uh, they're winning. Ooh, they're going to charge beyond the road. You know what? With a minute 50 left in the game, but no chance of hitting last stand, that's exactly what they need to be doing. They need to be advancing away from the point, advancing forward. Uni didn't find a push, didn't lose a second of time. Because, again, it, they're, you know. Um, yeah, because for, yeah, for a final push, you get two full charges from the attacker spawn the point. So yes. that two times, and that's how much time you get for final push. And if you're lower than that time limit, the game just continues as if nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Yep. So on every single map, there's a certain point around three minutes or so where the attackers basically have infinite tickets, even if they don't hit final push. Um, which we never really see people playing like that. We see them playing like they're still breaking, which is kind of cringe. Uh, I think if, if you know if I were the Confederates here, my my order would be everyone go to that stone wall. They can go to that stone wall. Um, oh jeez. You know, <laughs> union now charging in. However, the Union have no reloads, and the Confederates have Buck and Ball. They either have Buck and Ball or Enfields or Whitworths or Mississippis or good shit. Um, yeah. I don't you... see why they're kind of forming up in lines here. Who the rebels? Yeah, yeah, the rebels. They kind of like like they they were stopping each other. Like they had to, I think they had a couple team kills there too. Uh, but we can see here that the Union. Um, are funneled completely in between these two confederate groups. Uh, the right click isn't really working well for the guys who are up there. Um, but now, ooh, those guys who are back there, I think it should be on point. That's kind of dumb. Um, only a couple these guys, guys over here now charging so. in the confederate right, the union left, catching a couple guys off guard, but I don't think they'll be able to have a significant enough uh, uh, effect on this point. Yeah, no, uh, a couple union's confederates advancing. In. Union's just trickling couple... in. Mm -hmm. um, they could have, I don't know, I, I, I don't actually think they could have done anything different than this. Uh, this is about all they could have done. That's true. Um, however, what they could have done... Yo, Confederates hit last stand. What I said, they never hit last stand. Uh, I still stand with that. Even though they hit last stand here, what did they miss out on? One respawn with two or three people? That doesn't make a difference. The last stand did not change how they played the game. So, great job. Great but great play there in the last couple minutes by the Confederates. We'll see if we'll get an overtime. I don't nah, think so. Happen. No, because the clock has to start going down, and that'll do it. Yep. Oh, a little, a little weird glitch up there on the top, yeah. That was an interesting map. Yeah, for sure. Um... Savvy, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, the Union, at the beginning of the game, at least like the first half, it looked like their aggressiveness wasn't the best, but it looked like at least that they were going to be able to, uh, you know, pull it out. Uh, they were able to hit them engaged a little bit after them, and they're taking losses too. Um, but they just, I don't know, they didn't charge. That That's my thought. They never charged those two sheds there, the twin sheds, uh, and that did not lead to good things on the Union's end. Um, but all in all, I think the Confederates played really well. 
uh, defending. They were able to really stay together. They were able to stay in formation, except for a few small mistakes there near the uh, back end. Um, it was great. Uh, I, I, I think the Confederates played phenomenal. The Union played okay. Um, and what we saw there was that the Union, by only playing mediocrely, uh, lost a pretty Union-biased map. Look at those losses. It was just insane. Yeah, they, they were just content with uh, having a shootout at 40, 50 yards against guys with the bucking ball, which was never going to work out for them. Look at those out of lines. Jesus. 700 to 477. Jeez. That's crazy. Yeah, I What'd would Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I wonder how different this would be if they were all in the Steam chat and if, um, I guess, what was it? Houses was allowed. Like you said, houses. the house probably wouldn't make much of a difference because, like you said, it was a ticket trap. But I wonder how different the Union game would have been if they had a Steam chat because communication mm -hmm. would have been very hard for them. So. Yeah, it, I agree. If nothing else, the house gives everybody something to focus on and something to attack at, right? Um, oh, we can see there that Mr. Parker in the chat, I don't know if it picks up on stream, um, he said that he won't be sitting down for a week now. Uh, one guy said, we got ratioed. Uh, he said, such a shitty map. What? <laughs> That's a, such a Union bias map. <laughs> Whatever. Um, now it, we're going into Roulette Lane, a famous Confederate bias map. All right, here's our second round roulette lane. We're going to be doing a little pregame of the map right now while you can actually see the map. So we'll start off with Sevi. Take yes. it away. So, yeah, this map is very interesting. Um, if you don't know, again, it's called Roulette Lane, uh, but it was built a little counterattack that the Confederates did. You can see that there's the blading lane. So earlier on in the day, if I press F2, we can see the exact store context. If you don't know, you can you can press F2, and it just tells you what happens. Um, and it just, it just doesn't really tell you that much. It just tells you who uh, is decking who. Um, but like it says there, this is part of Cook's counter charge. Um, you know, well, you know, they, they're under the command of Cook, and Cook did a small counter charge. Um, so the Confederates had a small flank over here on the Union. I don't think it was this severe though. Uh, yeah, this is a little more severe than I would think. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, the, the map isn't the exactly exactly you know pin perfect down to where it was down in real life, but it represents a good counterattack very well. Um, the Union had to hold the top of this hill area and a stone wall. Um, and with this long fence line. So it looks like they have a stone wall. So you think, oh, they have a stone wall, great. Well, yeah, but the Confederates can go all the way over that hill, all the way over around that way. Um, you can go all the way in this lake too, uh, which, you know, we've had a lot of fun times because over here in the far end, far end of this lake, you can actually get all the way inside of it and submerge yourself. Um, obviously, you can do that in spectator cam whenever you want, but even as infantry, you'll just uh, submerge yourself down there. The Confederates, they have some buck and ball. I think both regiments. I, I, I hate saying that because I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm wrong. Um, but I'm pretty sure, let me look, uh, I'm, I'm not going to spend too long on it, but I know for certain that they have at least some bucking ball. These guys yelling, hee hee, oh, that just sounds phenomenal. Um, so yeah, these Confederate men, I'm not going to keep looking at their guns, but I know for certain they have some bucking ball. Um, yeah. oh, I hear the fucking, this is a Quebecois Dixie. Uh, I think that might be copyrighted, Kevin, so I'm not going to be. Kevin Quad? No, no, <laughs> Quebecois, like French. Quebec oh, <laughs> there's a French oh, wait, version too? Seconds. <laughs> You've never heard it. Look it up. French Dixie. No, I've um, heard. Uh, I, I've heard the normal one, Russian, German. I haven't heard yeah. French. I'm so slow, Calendarlander, Vola. Um, yeah. I... So, uh, Union again. They can't move very far. Uh, this is still considered the Schmann area to be over the stone wall. Um, they have 20 seconds before they can start moving. I've never heard Dixie sung in French. He says, "Well, you know what? I have." The guy in chat says, at least. Um, I expect to see a couple groups go over here to the top of this hill, and a couple groups down on the bottom of that hill on the stone wall. Um, this is only 177 people. Uh, what I remember seeing in the last couple months of Second Corps being a thing was that the 300-player servers really enabled this to be, I'm going to say it, a union-biased map. No. Um, I hate to say it, because you know what? It was just... It was just, this is such a confederate bias map, at least on, on small player accounts like this. Um, but I don't know, if, if the Rebels play like the uh, the Yankees did last round, we might just see a Union win anyways. Yeah, um, based off what we saw last round, I think Union have a pretty good shot at this. Just in terms of communication, especially with communication. Yeah, yeah, because so. all they got to do is basically run up and down this fence and they can talk to each other. While the confederates will have to, like, you know, actually manage a whole attack. But we we'll see. see the, if I think all of the Confederates save. Let, let, let's go see which groups didn't. I think it'd be easier to count the ones who didn't go to the Confederate left. The ones who went to the Confederate right are the 13th of Georgia, the 3rd Alabama, the 1st Corps, Walker's Division, Anderson's Brigade, 13th Georgia. Okay, maybe there's a lot of groups here. I'm going to stop counting them. You can, you can look at yourself if you want. <laughs> and meanwhile, these groups I'm about to pan over are the ones who are going to the left. You can see the names themselves. I'm just going to fucking say it. the 6th, the 10th, the 2nd Corps. And that's about it. Uh, now pushing up over to this barn again. This barn offers the Confederates a stone wall from which they can shoot and eventually mount a charge on the top of that hill. Um, 
And to be I, honest, I think this yeah. this attack is going to be a diversion for the other prong that we were first looking at, unless they already see him already. They have a couple guys over here, but definitely not enough to retain a charge. If the Confederates were to mount a charge over here, they'd definitely kill these TB people. Yeah, I think it's over here that the seventh and the twentieth are facing off against the. Yeah, the rest of these guys over here. Uh, they're, they're in a really spread out uh, column here. Um, don't know why they're that spread out. The guy in the front's probably out of line. Not even in skirmishing, God imagine. Um, this is really, really, really spread out. I don't know what they just did there. The Confederates just gave that up. They took the house, but why would you ever want to take this house? This house kind of sucks as a position. Third Alabama now behind it. Um, why? Who knows? I guess they want to shoot us. They want to shoot some dirt for the next half hour. Yeah, they need to charge in with their group together to make this really effective because. If they all charge in now on these two prongs, which they're charging in on one prong right now on the right side, um, but they need to—they could spread out the union here very easily and um, mm -hmm. possibly get some good ground on one of those charges. Yes, yeah, yes, uh, I, I agree with that. Because look now, there's look. barely any union on the top of the hill. They, all right, never mind. The flags weren't picking up on my end. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> a few people. There's a few people. Um, what people don't really know is that this section of the fence somewhere here, you can fit around 40 people on it, and it is on point. Um, it's this section right here. It's on point. You can capture from here. Uh, I've seen it a couple times where the unit have too many people on point and the Confederates just like stack up their own point. Or even better, back, uh, I th I've only ever done this once, but one of the rounds I led with Roulette, we were able to reek the Confederates had taken the hill and that, and we simply moved our counterattack or right there on that fence line and captured the point. Um, it was insane, but yeah. Uh, we don't see that very often because I'm going to bet, um, with what we saw last night with people not knowing where the capture point was. Uh, people probably don't know where that capture point is either. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I would agree. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course, it, I've only ever been able to use it once. It's such a small, minuscule thing, but it gives so much more options if you know that it's there. Yeah, these boundaries are quite interesting. Well, they're all like perfect opinion. rectangles. They are? I guess I should... Don't we have a... Isn't there a, a chat on the IVB server that's like private? Hey, like... Sh yeah, it's private. There's the reason. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Uh, the, the, the chat is long since outdated anyways, and we only have like five maps in there. Um, and I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm just gonna say it, I stole that from the second core Discord. Oh, like, okay. Like, they, they had it open to our reps, and I just like looked in their chat, and it was just like right there, and I was like, oh, there's a capture points for every single map. So I just like took it. Um, <laughs> big brain play. Yeah, yeah, big brain. Um, we can see the 10th Alabama, nice, perfect volley line, that was sexy, uh, shooting a stone wall. Getting down their Confederate flag there, or the Union flag there, and what they're shooting at right here is this area of this bush, um, where we will probably see a lot of people holding. This corner is very vulnerable for the Yankees, but they will always have people on it for no god forsaken reason. I have no idea why, but everyone just loves being on that section of the fence line. It's a death trap, though. Um, they're holding the top of this hill. These Confederates need to charge. They're not going to move by shooting. Um, so the guys over here on the left, they have, yes, yes, these guys have done a good job cutting off the Union from their uh, from their spawn. Again, remember, if the Union want to respawn, they got to spawn down here in the bloody lane. Which, I don't know. Um, and they are facing off still against the TB, shooting off against them. But these guys seem to not really be caring about the TB. Instead, shooting up the hill mostly. Not really. Some of them are still shooting backwards. Yeah, these, uh, I would recommend just charging them. Yeah, these rebels could charge the dudes out on the right, the respawns that are coming in, and then go up to that artillery and pull the Union off the snake fence or the stone wall. We see Union moving in the distance, I think it is. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's Union group. up the hill. No, no, no. That, that is a small union group advancing over there. They're not opening over, over the fence. What I just heard was that a small recruit said they're out of bounds. Yes, they're out of bounds, true. But it's less than a five-second run out of bounds. You can stab them all and get back in line within less than 20 seconds. Um, people are... Oh, I just heard a guy yell at the sprint. Let's see what this group is doing. They're moving down here on this fence line. Uh, if they know it's on point, they know it's on point. But if they don't, you know, they might have a close ride. Oh, they're going to the area that's not on point. They're up and overing. They're taking the stone wall. Are they trying to charge the stone wall? Is there a charge going on? This is a charge going on. Wow, that, that's perfect coordination by the Confederates. I didn't even think they'd be able to do that without a steam chat. That's great right there. They um, probably had a uh, time where they were going to yeah, do that. I, maybe 3440. Uh, Confederates now numbering the Union on point, and the Confederates over here on the far Confederate left charging up the hill. They might fail, but they don't really need to succeed. They just need to keep the Union up their pin. Really, that's what they need to be doing. Um, that is That was a good charge out there by the Confederates. Phenomenal timing, uh, killing all the men who were on point. Uh, and it looks like, all, yes, they did lose that at the top of the hill. Um, so, wow, that was phenomenal. Oh, if they had these guys charging with them, they probably would have won, though. Who is this? This is the 2nd Corps, 6th Alabama, or 6th Louisiana. If they had advanced Alabama. with those guys, they probably would have been able to kill the 24th Georgia and the CB Corn Brigade, I guess. I don't really know. Uh, these Confederates can just hold the stone wall. Yeah, uh, no, yeah.
Confederates now got Stonewall. They got nice shots on that Union group that uh, won their charge. We'll see if the Union mm -hmm. group comes down the hill, which it looks like they are. I see one dude charging down. If they just shoot their shots centered right at that fence line, they will kill so many. But it looks like some of them are just trying to shoot Rambos and the f corn and the everything. And uh, it just hurts to see. Hurts to see when a giant line doesn't focus their entire shot on one people. Um, I want to see an early cap here. Early cap is exactly what they need to be doing to drive the, the Union off the hill and to give themselves more time. Um, I really, really hope that they early cap here for their own sake. Obviously, for the Union's sake, the Union are probably hoping that they don't early cap. Um, maybe they are. Maybe they think that they're going to win on the counterattack. Uh, who knows? Uh, but however, I don't know. I, I, I highly doubt that they would be able to win after losing or after going into counterattack. Yeah, because now... Oh, I forgot my train of thought. But, like, last round, we saw how... Um, trap. <laughs> I forgot where I was going with this, man. I'm a little tired. Yeah, uh, I feel that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I was going to say is the attackers on the map, as we're seeing so far, they're all spread out. So communication is going to be very, very hard. If they can pause the timer and allow themselves to re little organize a little better and force the Union to come out, we could knock the Union down a lot, which we didn't mm -hmm. see happen last round, and which is why the Confederacy was able to win defending. I agree, I agree. If the Union last round at any point really capped, I think they would have won. Like, from there and then, I don't think the, the Confederates would have been able to mount up and actually counterattack. Now, the Confederates uh, pushed the Union into a counterattack, which, again, if you don't know, um, what that means is because they were battle ready, the Union, that is, um, the Union were better ready when they lost the point. That means they get 20 minutes to try to recapture this point. If, when you see that little yellow timer right there, if it goes down and hits zero, um, the Confederates will win the game. However, a slight disadvantage for the Confederates is that now they receive the Defender end stage, which is Last Stand, instead of the Attacker end stage, which is Final Push. Uh, last Stand means that they would have no reinforcements. If they hit that and then die and they lose the point, they would lose the game also. I've... Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to happen, though. They're, they're bad already. They have 20 minutes. They have more ticks in the Union. I think they're going to win. Yeah, no. And now the um, Confederacy will be able to be a little closer together, especially on that corner that we're seeing. you got someone on the stone wall, some on the stake fence. Confederacy is going to be a lot closer to each other. Mm -hmm. They're going to be able to corner off. and probably I think they're going to try to kill this group up here. I think that's the main focus of their attacks. Uh, and then, yeah, the artillery. I'm so sorry, but people love the artillery on this map. I hate it so much. It's I've, I've never seen it do anything important. And what we see here is that it's overshooting, hitting the orchard, and just not killing anybody. Um, maybe suppressing them? I don't know, but I, I've never seen the artillery do anything important on this map. Um, guys, I killed Canister. Nice shot. Killed three people. Uh, whatever. I'm pretty sure having the extra nine people on infantry would have been better. Nine people. That's a bit much for artillery, in my opinion. Um, who knows? Maybe maybe they'll miraculously get a million kills and prove them wrong. But I think the Confederates are going to win here. I think the Confederates are in a phenomenal position, and I think I can call the entire game right now. I, I think they're going to win. Yeah, I yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, especially because, like I was saying a lot, closer with communication. I think a big thing with this event, with it being a line battle, is communication. Union is yeah. split apart right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so yes, but those historical rules where they can't use a disc or a, not a Discord, they they're allowed to use to, uh, their own Discords for their own chats, um, but where they can't use a Steam chat um, to talk between groups, um, that definitely just hurt them. However, the Confederates have been able to show much better organization in their charges. Um, then the Union, except for those couple uh, out-of-line charges that the uh, Confederates did last night, those are kind of dumb. Um, yeah. We can see now that the Union, uh, the first two minutes of their counterattack is gone. Now they're around uh, over 10% of the way through the counterattack. We haven't seen much uh, happen. Um, Confederate, or yeah, Confederates receiving a Union artillery thing while they are charging out these infantrymen. Um, now they have a huge force on the top of the hill. They have taken the hill. That might have been their prerogative the whole game. It wasn't necessarily for point, it was for the hill. This hill, if the Confederates are able to take it, or it does a lot. Uh, cannons at this range, I hate to say, it, they don't do much. You're not gonna, you know, maybe a couple of cancer kills, but if you're shooting shell shot or case shot at this range, you're not killing anything. Um, literally, all I can do is kill one person. So whatever. Union hitting engaged. Uh, about what we expect. Everyone's super clumped up from my taste over here. Uh, Union, however, now are uh, they have a? I'm sorry, they outnumber the people on point. Ooh. Confederacy engaged at around the same time. What that means is they've lost a lot more tickets than the Union have because they have a lot of tickets on this map. Yeah, for sure. But I think it's a good thing, though, because if the Union do recap point, again, we'll go back to that uh, normal timer. They get 32 and a half minutes now to try to knock the Union down the break in the last stand, whatever. Exactly, exactly. So. I don't think the Confederates are going to give up point, though. We can see now that they are charging out the AVB, who are the artillery group, um, and the rest of the flag bears up here. Uh, these guys are going to do their best to try to not die. But it won't be uh, won't be enough to stop him. I don't think. Um, oh, we can see James over here. He still he, he didn't pull out his pistol until it was well too late, and he got murked. 
uh, the rest of these guys up here are dead. Um, so now we can fire start control the cannons. Um, and now they're going back down to point. Wow, that is, these guys are, oh no, they're just chasing a flag bear. I was going to say, these guys are really on, uh, on, on it being fast over here. A small confederate push has killed the guys who were on point. Uh, the guys who were on point being the... I really can't tell, they're all dead now. Uh, whatever, I think it's a TB. I think it's a TB who died, yes. And the third Alabama are the ones who killed him. Um, over here on the right flank near the house, it looks like a small union advance over here. The JB has now taken up, I hear him yelling huzzah. And they have now taken up and killed a few people from the, uh, looks like the first corps. That guy was screaming really loud. Did they pick up on your end? Uh, I, I don't know. We'll see in the yeah. recording, guys. I think those Union guys are probably going to take the house and just get some... Someone they're nice not allowed to go in the house, though. Oh, right. They aren't. So they'll probably just crouch around it in their line, do independent shots, peeking around the corner. Mm -hmm. In all fairness, though, it is probably a good thing that the uh, Union are not allowed in that house. I, <laughs> I hate it so much when people go in that house. That house sucks. Confederate it is a horrible charging position for anybody to be in. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, just like you said, convert charging mount. The Union now advancing over there. Um, the reinforcements are getting up on that fence over there that we saw the uh, the Confederates took early on in the game. The Confederates have played this map masterfully, I think. I think what we've seen recently in the last few, uh, that's like six months or so, um, was that the Union have been able to uh, devise more and more strategies, more and more coordination to win this map more and more often. However, the Confederates simply reversed all that. They charged everywhere at the exact same time. They did it masterfully, and they were able to force the Union to play back like it was uh, like 2018, back when this, or not really 2018, like, like 2020, 2019, when this was such a horrible, horrible Union map. Uh, artillerists charging up the hill and dying out of line and skirmishing uh, doesn't mean much for them because they're in counterattack, but why? Why aren't they on uh, riflemen? I don't understand that. Are they not? Is it one of the rules of the event that you can't switch from artillery to riflemen once you die? I don't know. I could take a look. Maybe they were trying to do an organized charge, but I don't know if they were because you got more people trickling in now. I don't know if that yeah. is that was their Maybe plan. Maybe all those guys charged at once. Just, yeah, I don't know. Yep, and now uh, the Confederates are killing out those guys over there. The uh, guys on top of the hill, some of them retreating back to their front line. I, to be honest, I think it would be better for the uh, Confederates to hold up here on these caissons, limbers, and cannons. But you know what? It's, I mean, maybe they want to be like a little uh, hermit crab, right? Where they pounce out once the Union get back up here um, and to try to trap them in. Because this artillery is just nothing more than a trap for the Union to lose more men out of the line. Their main focus should be on this road, charging down the road over and over and over until they win. Eventually they will win because their they're, they're, they're respawn is closer. Yeah, so I'm looking at artillery groups, and the rules are, so they'll be manned by designated units, but units will not permanently be assigned to artillery. I don't know if that means, like, they like they can leave it whenever they want, or if it is, uh, they have to be told to leave it, or whatever. Oh, what I think that means is that a, uh, a random couldn't just spawn in, and like, like if, if, if like I were an infantry group, I couldn't just spawn an artillery and start ordering them around if I wanted to, or I, I couldn't take my own gun for nothing, you know? Yeah, yeah. But who knows? Maybe maybe they're not allowed to switch. You're not hitting, taking losses. You have 13 minutes to recapture this point. Um, I don't see it happening. I don't oh. think that the uh, the union with their spread out advances are going to be able to do anything more than just die over and over for the next 13 minutes until the game is over. So uh, if, if the, the union if the if the union hits final push, will the counterattack timer go down? Oh, I maybe. I don't know. I've never, <laughs> never tested that. I mean, I, I, who it cares? might happen. Uh, by the time they hit final push, it won't really matter. The game will be almost over. Um, I don't. I don't. If it does, it won't make it, you know. Maybe we're gonna see that this game, because uh, it's a very small run from their thing. Wait a minute, is the counterattack final push based off of that run from from the Confederate, like the actual real attackers or the defenders? I think if it's a counterattack and the points flipped, I think it would have to be the Union, Union spawn. Well, yeah, but I don't know if like maybe the maybe the devs never thought of that. Maybe. I don't know, because there's, there's a few uh, places in this game, for example, the old Whitworth Bayonet, where it just looks like the developers uh, never realized how that would, uh, you know, affect people. Um, or even better, back in the day when you had to aim bottom of the view with the infield to hit at 100 yards. So, yeah. Um, either way, we can see now the unit advancing over on this fence, uh, charging right past the area that's on point, showing that, they, that showing that they do not know the boundaries of this point marker. Um, if they just moved all their entire group but they're on a the point, they would start capping. Uh, yeah, I think I think out. they're just trying to charge those guys out. I don't think they're worried about capping the point. Probably don't know about it because I mean I didn't know about it. There's a lot of things I still don't know about this game, but yeah, I'll be honest. I'll, like I, I I think the number of people who know about that is like less than a dozen. Anyways, so whatever. And I know Bus knows about it because I told him. Maybe a few others. I don't know. But now everyone um, who's watching this part of the video knows too. Yeah. So yeah, if you didn't know that, yeah, that's that's what that is. And now you're part of a cool club. Uh, 
Yeah. Bus is gonna fucking comment. He's gonna be like, pee pee fart or something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so by. Confederates, yeah, the Confederates around the house were cheated a little bit back on the orchard fence. Uh, Confederates who are up on the hill, they have a phenomenal position now. Um, they basically reverse the cards. You know, they they are holding where the Union were holding earlier. They have a much easier line of defense where like they can just have a these three groups are here. Let's see, the middle group is the first corps and the second corps. This over here is the tenth Alabama or tenth Louisiana. I'm so sorry, tenth Louisiana. And over here is the. Second, second core, RTC, whatever that means. Other second core people, a bunch of people. This is blob over 13th Georgia too. Um, they're now receiving a Union charge. Again, where they were wasn't on point. So, but the Union captain right now does not necessarily mean that they have never the Confederates or even that they're winning. It just means that they have more men on the road, which obviously they have more men on the road. Yeah, half uh, those guys charged in, the other half stayed back. They're not even with the rest of their team. This charge ain't gonna work. Yeah, so let's see. This is the 24 Georgia. Yeah, like, even within their own group, they weren't very organized there. Where even the 24 Georgia as a regiment, only half their men actually committed to the charge. Uh, we see too often when people charge in lines, I'm sorry, when people charge in columns, is that, you know, the back of the line just isn't able to do anything. Uh, back of the column, I guess? I I'm, I'm trying to, like, say, get my columns and lines not mixed up, because people are very anal about that sometimes. <laughs> well, actually, that's a line, not a column. Or I would think column, I would think a line. a line would be horizontal, and a column would be vertical. Yes, if you're marching down this... If yeah. you're marching down this road, you're in a line, if or you're in a column. If you're in a big line right here and dancing that way, you're a line. We never see line charges. You don't see a line charging a line. No. That's... And in these type of events, you're supposed to charge in kind of like a I, line well, or a it, column it's, it's as the best you're possible. It's not really a line battle. Oh, it's not, it's like, not really look... a line battle. I mean, technically. Historical rules, I guess. Oh, I'll look at it one more time to make sure I know what the heck I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just don't think that the charge in a strictly, I don't know, I, I just think that a maybe a more linear position instead of a more column-like position would be better for the uh, Chargers, even in a normal event, just because it allows everybody to hit the group at the exact same time. Um, again, stabs per minute. And also, too, the defending team, if they're charging in, like, this column can just shoot one line, like, yes, all yes, focus yes. on one area. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot easier to defend against. So but we're never going to really see that, to be honest. Yeah, so the charges need to be carried out in a line formation as much as possible. doesn't have to this be perfect, but blobs are also not recommended. Yes. Huh. Well, yeah, I, I guess that column then was really – it wasn't just bad and horrible play, but it was also against the rules. Huh. Neat. But I don't know how strictly enforced these are because, you know, it's kind of hard. Guys, let's get in a big perfect line and let's charge. Like – that's that's Ooh. gonna be too hard. You know what we said earlier? How the uh, how the people who are artillery should probably switch to riflemen. Well, they have, and they've retaken the artillery positions, and now they've taken the battle hill. That was a phenomenal move. But which group is this? This is the IVB and the Fourth New Jersey. They did a great job. Now they're taking the top of the hill. They have to pry for the enemy to hide around. Um, <laughs> I, I wonder. If, the I wonder if that hill. charge, that first charge we saw, was a uh, distraction. Maybe a little early, but Ooh. it could have been a distraction because all the rebels shifted down there. Union now can hold the arty position. I wonder if the Confederacy will charge up the, the hill before the Union can get more guys up there. Mm -hmm. Union hitting breaking, yes. Uh, what you said there, I, I agree with Al. It was probably great positioning for the uh, Union. However, the Confederates just got the reinforcements up. The guys who died up there are now back up, and the JB in a full unit has just taken the bottom of this hill. Um, I, well. They got yeah, it. Yeah, no. Oh, no, they, they, they can hold here. They can hold the bottom of that hill and just stay. They don't got to kill those guys. They now hold the point. Confederates have that now. If anything, what all that all that charge did was improve the Confederate position on point. Um, but the Union did there was they traded the top of the hill for point. And I think that they, the Union, if anything, they were in control of point. If they advanced a line over here, just in this open, they would have started capping the point. Um, most people don't know that, though. Most people don't really care. Whatever. Ah, uh, kind of care, whatever. People don't really play around point as much. The Union, Confederates didn't take losses doesn't mean jack shit, to be honest. Um... Really, it doesn't mean jack. If the Union recaptures the point, they'll have to hold for 32 minutes of taking losses. If the Confederates win, then they win, so who cares? Um, what we see now is that the Confederates are not going to go from taking losses to breaking to final to last stand in seven minutes. So Confederates literally don't have to worry about tickets. The Union, I don't, what are they doing? They have six minutes left the game and they're advancing. They're, try, they're still trying to maneuver. Oh, I, I have another question, yeah. right? So let's say the Confederacy goes down to last stand, theoretically, but they then the Union... Though. Wait, so the Union would recap their oh, win. No, no, Never no, mind, so never sorry. mind. They, yeah, yeah, yeah they, they, they would they win would the game. Nice I, yes. I need to think that. Yeah, okay. My bad. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, however, that is something important that some viewers know. I actually have some regimental commanders understand this. Um, if the Confederates are breaking and then the Union recapped, 
it would not be an end. Like, 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 the Union capturing, recapturing it when the Confederates are breaking would not end the game. They would simply be at breaking still. Oh my god, Union doing exactly what I said they should do, advancing straight down the road. You know what, maybe, maybe this will be good enough, maybe this will be enough to actually start capping. They are not capturing the point, they can stop right where they are and stop capping the point. But they're not gonna. They're gonna keep charging and they're gonna die. Nice job, Union. Um, yeah, they, they could have stopped right there. They could have formed a line right there, 100 yards away from the enemy. Um, wait a minute. They, they split uh, off too. Half the group went for this group that we're looking at now, and, and the other half went to the... I wonder if they were trying that to get dumb. into the cover. I don't know. That was good. The rest of the dumb. Union team now pouring in. I don't... Ooh, this might be... This is going to be close. They're Union splitting down up. At the bottom of the hill died almost... Pretty much most of them now they're reloading. Uh, the unit over here, a very extremely spread out melee. I cannot express how porous that melee was. Uh, sure, these, they're going to get a couple kills over here. Mr. Nessie over here might be a couple pistol shots off, but nowhere near enough to actually justify that. You know, like six kills isn't enough yeah. to make it worth I don't know if they were told to all spread out and like some charge middle, some charge left, some charge right, or what, because they looked very spread out going into that charge. Yeah. Uh, yes, Confederates went at the, at the uh, base of the hill. Um, Union now holding over there in the middle of this open road. Again, they, them capping does not mean that they necessarily won. It just means that they have more men on the road. Rebels coming uh, in on their flank now. Phenomenal move there with the sixth. Shooting Bucking Ball in at like five yards. Great charge there. Uh, I think that that right there, once they kill the last couple guys on the road, um, will probably start... Ooh! Union, Bayonet and Grug and going. If Union start Grug and going, the entire team will win, I think. But they're not, they're not. They're, they're bayoneting and going or even worse, you know? Oh, I see. Yeah, look at that. They're some of them are gonna reload. This is not the time to get reloads. You know, you gotta get a grug and go. Literally, if they grugged and go for the rest of the next 40 minutes, 30 seconds, the Union would win. I well, not that they win the game. They would definitely win this counter charge though. Uh, Confederates surrounded the Union. Any Union who are still up here about to die on line or retreat. Uh, their flag bearers able to run away, sure. Um, but what we see now is that the Union are gonna give the Confederates ample time to get a response. Um, really, the Confederates, they have a slightly further away respawn. Union cannot push. Oh, did the timer go the down? The I timer did go down. Okay. Well, you know what? Then we do have proof that yes, the timer does go down. Uh, that's that's very interesting. Actually, I I I'm willing to bet I've seen that before, but I never actually registered in my mind. You know. That makes sense. Uh, so two and a half minutes. You think that's Union or Confederate spawn? Oh, I could be either. This is a very small map. Maybe yeah, you know should. what? I yeah. I, I, maybe we'll have to test it ourselves. Uh, I actually I know exactly the way that we would test it. You know what I mean? Um. So we would just hack yeah, into the I, game, you know? Yeah, maybe later. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe maybe I'll just like open the source code. I'll delete Trusted Jam from the game. As you uh, should. Removed Hero Brian. <laughs> um, so yeah, you want? Know, you know, I guess I'll do some testing there. Two per gun, not one per gun. What? That's a rule? That's a lame rule. Oh, whatever. I, I, okay, I guess that actually explains why I had so many artillery men earlier. Uh, they need two per gun. So I guess it's not the artillery's fault uh, that they had so many men. Uh, can, Union charging on the wrong side of the road. Why would you charge on the side of the road? They still, they now outnumber the, the Confederates on point, though. Um, let's see if the Confederate reinforcements will get on point just to hashtag stop the cap. Um, again, outnumbering them on point does not necessarily mean that you're winning. It just means that you have more men on that small, long rectangle. So, yeah. This is going to be tight. I think those Union guys that spawn got to get there now. they got to start yes, running. I agree. If the Union if guys who spawn get win. there, I think Union will win this. Yes, definitely the counterattack. Uh, but I, I, I still think that the Union have no chance of winning this game as a whole. Uh, if they if they were to recapture right now, they would be at taking losses for the next 32 minutes, possibly even breaking within the hour. Um, you know, within the hour. I mean, like, like within the next five minutes or so. Yeah, for uh, sure. In best case scenario right now, the Union win and go up to taking losses. Uh, you know, and, and even that, if they push down the Confederates to breaking, they're going to lose, you know. Um, so, whatever. Their, their main go... So blow up and act like I don't know nobody. No, it, it should be to, to charge her there, get on that road over there, and just not to kill any rebels, you know? Yeah, more rebels coming in from that wood house. You see them now coming in, mm -hmm. dealing damage. I never God, thought... My, my frame rate's lower right now. I never thought I'd see a map go like this before, where <laughs> there's a final push, the defending team's on final push, the attacking like, team's on taking losses, uh, the final push clock gets flipped or gets changed. Holy I've never shit, seen this before. These idiots are bayonetting. They got you 14 have 10 seconds. seconds. No. You literally don't. Have, he's reloading. Oh I mean, he's not gonna God. get. He's not gonna get there anyways. Well, no, maybe yeah, if, well, there's overtime, if there's overtime. If there's overtime, yeah. If he, if he grugged, if he grugged, he would have gotten it. Um. Yeah. Look at that. Just Union did not play well. That I don't think. No. I don't think he Confederacy deserved this 2-0 through and through. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, um, a very interesting 
second round, in my opinion. I've never seen that uh, the final push timer caused the counterattack stage to go down. That's a first. So, uh, Sevi, your thoughts? Yeah. Um, you know, like I was saying earlier, this is uh, over the last six months or so, this map has become slightly more Union. Uh, I still think at 300 players, even though what we saw today, I think if the Union had an extra 100 players, if both teams had an extra 100 players in their team, you know, it would have been a very easy Union wipe. Um, but still, what we saw was just that the Union were not able to actually, like, mount any proper counter charges. Uh, once they lost this rhythm right here, they just lost the game, you know. They weren't able, actually, to do anything against it. And then that one charge up here, that, like, like they... The one time where they charged down, like, the 24th. And sure, it got the Confederates off the hill. But all them, it was that now the Confederates are on point, and they're not going to move. Um, that's not what they should have done. Uh, the Union did not play very well there at all. Very close losses. Very good on the Confederates team, at least for being attacking. Only losing less men than the Union. Um, that is insane. So I think the Confederates played that as phenomenally as I've seen Roulette Lane played in a long time for the attackers. Yeah, I would say they honestly, they probably at the beginning of the game were like, okay, at this time when it was like 34 or something, I don't remember when it was. They're like, we're going to charge then. That'll give all of our guys time to get in position, to get ready to go. And then we'll all go at the same time. And once they did that, just like you said, turned back into the 2018 roulette lane and the union was just in shambles the whole round. That was, that mm -hmm. was a crazy round to watch. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think both rounds, like you said, they uh, the Confederates just played better than the Union in all areas in you know, organization and charging, except for a few blunders here and there, which you can expect from every game. Nobody's perfect. So, yeah. All right. With that being said, the Confederates get a 2-0 decisive victory today. And now we'll be having an interview with some of the leaders of today's match. Here we go. All right, everybody. We have some regimental leaders or leaders from tonight's um, historical rules event. On the side of the Confederacy, we have Famous, Help, and Shoemaker. As on the Union, we have Sluggy and Pixel. So we're just going to be asking them some questions about the round and get their perspective on the strategy because we only see the view from above, um, and they're actually dealing with everything on the ground. So I'll pose, pose the first question to the Union. On the first round, which was Otto and Sherrick Farms, what was your guys' original strategy, and what did you guys do to react to the uh, changing battlefield? Okay, so the strategy was like basically take as much as we can quickly, right? As much as we can and get their losses because we needed to get them out of their basically favorite position, which is behind the uh, up on the hill behind the, behind those houses. Unfortunately, we failed to do that because they countered us with like massive volleys, and we our screens just went gray. We got suppressed, and we needed basically to fall back to. The defilade. Uh, we also had a unit on the left, uh, about for, for about 20 guys, to like basically shift the guys from left to, to right, hopingly the CSA wouldn't stay in one place, but that obviously didn't work as well. Uh, after that, we tried everything to get them out out of their hiding spots. We tried to like send some unit to. Uh, to like get the point, but if we were just slaughtered basically by shots, because there were people waiting for us always there. So, and by the way, the the artillery was kind of on our side. On our side, uh, we didn't not realize they would be that good on that map. It really hurt us. Uh, one shot at the entire units, like twenty five guys. So that was really <laughs> not not great. All right, Sluggy, is there anything you want to add on to that? Well, um, I guess I could. Uh, with my unit, we were on the far left for the first map. So we had a slightly different job uh, since we're not with the main group of the Union. So basically what we were trying to achieve on the left was, well, suppressing the artillery that was on the flank because there is two artillery uh, spots for the Confederates. One that is uh, left and that can shoot on directly on point and one that is on the right. Uh, so we're trying to suppress the artillery on the left, make sure that the infantry couldn't maneuver around the center and uh, always you know, be ready for a final push on the point uh, when the opportunity should itself. So it was a fine balance between you know, trying to apply a bit of pressure but staying alive because uh, there's a lot of tickets that are lost on the right, so we can't afford losing too many tickets on the left. 
um, if I have to make a criticism towards what we did, was that towards the end of the match, we were a bit late in uh, applying the pressure together with the right flank because they did have to call for uh, for help and uh, with the you know, broken communication in the battlefield, uh, we were a tad late. Uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, I think it was a close call. We could have maybe have won that one, although it was tough. Yeah, for sure. All right, thank you for that. And now, same thing to the uh, Confederate representatives here. What was your guys' original strategy, and how did you react to the ever-changing map for Otto and Sherrick Farms? Okay, so from the very beginning, we tried to make a strict front line at the small houses and a skirmishing unit on the far left side of Union Army. It was Verde Alabama. GPs themselves placed in uh, two small houses on the Union right flank, and our, our job was to just hold out the Yankees. 13 Georgia and 1st Corps tried to support us in this job. And it was really devastating Union artillery who taken out us every five minutes. Very good, good job from the Union team, I would say. All right, thank you. Any other comments? No, I think. All right. Oh, help. Were you going to say something? Are you... Wait, are you talking, or are you just hitting your push to talk, and I can't hear? Nope, there we are. Sorry okay, about that. sweet. No, you're good, you're good. Uh, I will simply say that from on the far left is the skirmishers. Any time, what we were going to do was basically not shoot a single round till the Union crossed over the stone wall, because there's no point pelting a solid object like that. So anytime they hopped over, we'd start shooting. If they start getting annoyed by us up there and try to push us out, we'd go back to 13th to basically thicken up their line. So if they wanted to commit to getting rid of them, we were there to give them a few extra rifles. That. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, in that case, we'll be moving on to round two now, which was roulette lane. We'll start with the union. Same question, except now on roulette lane. What was your guys' original strategy, and how did you react to the ever-changing battle? Okay, so our uh, original strategy actually was to basically keep the snake fence all the, on the top and keep uh, the corner, which was kind of on the point, and then keep our units on the stone wall. So basically it was like an L shape, but everybody on the right side, we we had a small unit on the left, but that was about it. We were expecting a huge charge from the CSA as they always do on these events. They always do a charge somewhere. Um, what we didn't expect it was with a bit of a d delay. And some of our units uh, moved off of their original spots a bit too fast. And that caused us to basically fall apart really fast. And as we saw many times, when you give CSA an end, you it's really hard to retake it. All right, thank you for that. Sluggy, you have anything? Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, as for us, unfortunately, I wasn't aware of the original strategy for this map because I was given leadership at the very last moment. Because uh, the officer was uh, going to admin, so I was assigned at the very center on the corner. Uh, and unfortunately, as a pixel said, uh, Confederates really didn't play as they usually do. So they first completely destroyed their far left at the start of the game. Uh, then just later on, they deleted us on the center. Uh, I think we had a charge from the tenth and uh russian speakers i don't remember which one was it it was um so basically by the time you came back from maine all that was remaining was a right flank and it did not have the numbers to uh to do anything so from there on you say adapt to the battlefield all we could do is uh go from the main road do volleys on the flank of uh the confederates and just wait for an opportunity we did try a few times uh it was close, 
uh, but we never really made it through. And that's about it. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, same question again, Confederacy on Roulette Lane. What was your guys' original plan, and how did you react to the ever change of Battlefield? Okay. So I want to say we had uh, two, two basic plans, and then we just merged it up into one very good plan that was actually in the event. The original plan was to go wave one on the battle plan I sent it to you, and charge if and every unit is charging the hill and trying to take out the Union artillery. But then we developed a second one, where is wave one going three units, it was 6LA, 10LA and Jenkins Brigade, and then the wave two, it is going straight to the point, uh, was 1st Corps, 3rd Alabama and 13th Georgia. And we, need, we needed to attack in into one time, like it was 35 minutes, we are going to charge the unit positions. And if it fails, we wait another 5 minutes and charge in the 30 minutes. Uh, we was lucky to do it from the f from the first attack, take out the Union positions, and yeah, that is when we won the battle. They just couldn't retake all the original positions. All right, thank you. For mass or help, anything you yeah. two want to say? Yeah, uh, for uh, as uh, say my uh, my friend uh, Shmar, uh, basically we wanted to to attack the. To do a massive charge on, on the hill, uh, at, and uh, a part, a part succeed. Uh, I, I attack the, the lower part of the hill. Uh, I succeed to destroy the small unit, but after when I saw the, um, another unit coming down to the hill, uh, we were too weak for for holding our position. I decided to um, to fall back to the barn and regroup with my men. And after with the second corps, we succeed to um, to charge the top of the hill. Uh, because, uh, in my opinion, on this map, the top of the hill is the key of the of the victory. Because you have artillery and uh, you have a view on all the battlefield. In this way, you can defend the point. You can send volley everywhere from there. All right, thank you. Um, help, did you want to say anything? I honestly can't say too much because uh, another person was in charge of that for i -Corps. All right. In that case, uh, that sums up my questions. Sevi, do you have a question for anybody? Yeah, so my questions are really go over both maps. And my uh, I have a question for the USA and one for the CSA. My first one for the Confederates is, um, so why do you guys think that your team won both rounds um, over the Union? Mm -hmm. I can answer it like this. When I open the tap menu, well, like the team balance, I saw 99 Confederates versus 88 Union guys. There, then I understand we won this game. Ah, uh, you think it was numbers? Yes. That does make sense. I, I did notice that too. Do any other Confederates have a uh, different opinion? Well, I guess not then. Yeah, I, the, the numbers definitely was a lot at that smaller count with like, you know, 10 people really does make a huge difference. And, uh, my question for the Union is, in, uh, in both rounds, um, it really looked like the Confederates were more organized almost and that they were able to time things out better. Um, going forward, the Union, uh, how, do you think you, how do you guys think that in these events without Steam Chat that you'll be able to uh, improve your coordination? Well, I know how we can, because uh, last week was a different ball game. It was basically our uh, communication like broke apart middle to when the event started and as i said in our debrief it felt like we were playing for each other not for the side if you know what i mean oh yeah yeah uh, right and it's kind of that thing we need just need to communicate if if somebody's okay i'm thinking i'm going forward you know i'm gonna push a bit tell other units like ask for help right and mm -hmm. don't don't just go you know and ex expect others to like join or stuff like that so Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess, yeah. As for me, I would say uh, that the reason why we lost today, you know, there might have been, uh, especially for the second map, uh, in uh, a problem with coordination, right? And that is especially showing on the type of maps that we had today. Um, so, you know, the kind of maps when there's not a lot of uh, wiggle room to maneuver around the enemy. Uh, where you don't have very distinct front lines, you know, a left, a center, and a right. The first map, 
wasn't so much like this with, for example, the second map. It's basically, as soon as you lose your position as a defender, there is that one road going to the point, and you can kind of go up the hill, or you can kind of go towards the left, but it's it's not really, you know, three different front lines. Basically, you go from main towards point. And when we find ourselves in those type of situation, we tend to do what Pixel just described as in uh, everyone just kind of improvise and tries to do best according to what they think is best. Well, the way we function as a union, uh, it's a lot easier for us to adapt when we have, uh, you know, separate front lines, then we, everyone, you know, can kind of pick where they want to be. And then when you see, oh, I'm on the right flank, there's the IVB next to me and there's the fifth US next to me. I'm going to communicate directly with these guys, make up a plan, plan up our charges. We know we're going to come back here. We know that's what's going to happen. We know how we can beat the enemy. Well, if everyone just find himself kind of on the same spot and improvising, then it's it's a lot harder. And we're not really used to that. Uh, and that really shows uh, on this type of map like today, which is why, you know, on some days we are much more stronger than what we should today, because that is really not what we're good at improvising on this such a small scale. So you think in the future you guys are going to try to stay together more? Um, well, I think if we don't change anything in the way we operate, I think that on certain maps we show ourselves uh, to be a lot more effective than on others. Uh, you know, maps that are standard uh, and that everyone knows how to fight properly with the different front lines, like for example, uh, uh, the church, or the map we played last week, uh, which I don't remember the name of the map, but you know, like every War of Rights pe people know that like, there's these maps where you have center, left, right, you know how it is, right? Mm -hmm. On those maps, on NT them, I think the Union can, I mean, this Union team, uh, we can show what we worth, but then whenever the Confederate can just, you know, bunch together and plan one good charge and just get us out, then suddenly we had less chickens. And that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But that's just my interpretation. I, I don't have uh, you know, perfect science. I think you explained it pretty well. Do uh, I, um, I mean, does anybody else in the union? That was it for everyone on the union. I, I, I think hey. everybody else in the union. I think everyone talked. Yeah. All right. So I'd like to thank everybody coming to this um, interview. Again, on the Confederacy, we had FAMAS, HELP, and Shoemaker, whereas the Union, we had Slugging Pixel. Um, their socials, if they want to put one down, will be in the description. We will also have all the regiments who participate in this video. Their discords will be linked in the description as well. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe for more. Uh, we need more frontline reporters and announcers, so please join our Discord. We'd be glad to have your help. And with that case, have a good day, good night, wherever you're at, and I'll see you guys later.